A new constitution will save Nigeria from total collapse, says a senior advocate of Nigeria, Chief Afe Babalola. The Nigerian Senate has prohibited the payment of ransom after amending the Terrorism Act of 2013. This is Plus Politics, and I'm Kofi Bartels. Welcome, a senior advocate of Nigeria and founder of the Afe Babalola University, Chief Afe Babalola, has called members of the Nigerian Bar Association to support the crusade for a new constitution to save Nigeria from what he called imminent collapse. Babalola said that Nigeria would have caught up with Britain if the military had not suspended the 1963 constitution, which he described as the People's Constitution, and in 1999, imposed one that could not address the issues of Nigeria. It's very interesting uh, statements by the revered gentleman. Now joining us to discuss this is a constitutional lawyer um, and the legal practitioner, Fesus Guche. We also have uh, Jide Ologun, but I'm told uh, our Chief Oguche will join us along the line. Uh, Jide Ologun, thanks very much for your time. And um, what are your thoughts? Let's start off from that uh, on this call by Afe Babalola SAN to um, the members of the bar in Nigeria. Thank you very much. The senior suit has been on this advocacy since around 2001, and based on his own argument that Nigeria is operating under an imposed constitution by the military when transferring power back to democracies. And then for some of us, we need to look at the basic need for the constitution. The constitution is about the basic principles and laws of a nation, state or social group that determine the powers and duties of the government, guaranteeing certain rights to the people in it. And basically, if you look at section 14, so section two of the Nigerian Constitution as like amended, for instance, it says that the security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of the government. Even if that is the only provision in that constitution that the government has tried to implement up to 70%, I believe that today Nigeria should be the third richest country in the world. So for the likes of us, it's not really about the constitution we have or about the drivers of the constitution. <clears throat> Even though we may have the argument that some elements of the constitution need to be reviewed, but we have also reviewed the constitution from time to time. And in comparison with the 1963 constitution that he's also making reference to right now, it is what we call the Republican constitution that swept away the hold of the colonial rule over Nigeria. Because in 1963, Nigeria became you know, a true uh, federation. We had four regions then that are autonomous and the influence of the queen surrender to the influence of Nigerians to govern their affairs. And the big question is that, what have we done so far with that privilege that we obtained in 1963 following the political independence of 1960? So you may, you may give us a new constitution if those who want to drive the constitution do not have the mindset of developmental government approaches, then we'll be back to square one. And there were some very prominent features of the 1963 constitution that we may want to consider. For example, it provided for an elected president, we still have that right now, that will no longer represent the Queen of England. The parliament bested alteration of the constitution, the procedure for creation of new states was established, and today we've been able to create up to 36 states, and the parliament made up of the president, Senate, and House of Representatives was there. The Supreme Court became the highest court in the land. And we still have some of it. And basically, I doubt if there's anything wrong with us having the Supreme Court at the highest court of the land. And when you talk about the merits, the elected president became the head of state to replace the British monarch. So that handed over to Nigerians, the management of Nigeria. And if we have mismanaged it, 
we may not blame the constitution so much. And the constitution was an autonomous one that is homemade constitution, considering the needs of the people at that point in time. And of course, the decision making process and the process in, 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 in that constitution was vested in Nigerians and still vested in Nigerians. But when you look at the 1963 Republican Constitution, it also has the, the demerit also. For example, only the legislative and executive arms of government were used effectively. And there was parliamentary supremacy in the Constitution. And right now we have a replica of that. We have the, the National Assembly that is made up of 109 senators and 360 House of Rest members that are now calling for the sack of service chiefs rather than proceeding on impeachment procedure if the president has failed to fulfill the mandate of section 14 subsection 2 of the Nigerian constitution. So right now you still find Nigerians at the mercy of the, the, the National Assembly, so to say. And I will say that really, except we are saying we are going back to regional government that represents the true federalism, where each region we have to manage her resources and make a contribution to the central government. But that may be a difficult one because we've come to the point in Nigeria where those who may be beneficiaries of this uh, presidential system of government we run, we go ahead headlong to oppose the call for this true federalism. And that is what we have been discussing under the call for restructuring so that each region can manage their resources and develop. Because one of the, the basic uh, features of the 1963 constitution under the true federalism that we, the regional government we had then, was a very healthy constitution. That was when you had the Obakran industrial estate, we had the, the coal in the southeastern part of the country, the granite pyramids in the north, and that was when we, we started the prestige station in Africa. You know, a lot of great things happened pre-education and, you know, real infrastructure yeah, yeah, but, 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 Logo, you, you've raised some inter interesting, very interesting points. I want to thank you for taking us down memory lane. Um, you seem to be saying that indeed, you know, the call for uh, a, a new constitution, a totally uh, new constitution to save Nigeria is a good one. But you've said that, um, it seems you're saying that that is not the answer. Um, that this 1963 constitution um, that was suspended by the military also had its merits, but it's the merits as well. I think that's what you're saying, um, that a constitution, if we have a new one, still is not the answer to Nigeria's issues. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. And I may, I may want to add this question. What constitution does Singapore run? Singapore became independent, left Malaysia in 1965 as a little coastal region with little resources. And by developmental leadership, Lee Kuan Yee was able to transform that third world in quotes to a first world. And that is one of the best nations to live and work in the world today. Are they debating constitution there? What constitution do they run in the United Arab Emirates that now operates an autopilot to prosperity? Or, I mean, do, do they not have a constitution in United Arab Emirates that they, they, you know, they, they, they identified sponsors of Boko Haram in Nigeria, they prosecuted them and jailed them, and yet we are not able to run with our own laws? Is there any provision in the constitution that says that terrorism should be allowed in Nigeria, that people should be killed as at will, that terrorists should apply and you know attack the train? Okay. So, so, so it's just of how we drive this system. So you're saying the constitution, as we even the one we have and the laws we have are enough to make Nigeria successful if we want the country to be successful? Absolutely. If you read section 14 to section 18 of the Nigerian constitution that has amended, you'll be amazed. And I'm challenging all our viewers to please spare some time to read it. For example, if you read section 18, if we have a serious-minded governance system, that is developmental in approach. We should not have ASU being on strike today because Section 18 says this government must provide education for all. We should not be condoning fight against education. You talk about the economic going read Section 15 and Section 16 that says that the resources of the country should not be managed in a way that we will concentrate wealth in the hands of a few. That we should have a dependent economy. 
that we should make affordable and available housing, food, care for the old, reasonable living minimum wage, you know, care for the disabled, available to all citizens. In fact, maximum happiness. Those provisions are then the constitution. So it's about how it is wrong that we have allowed nepotism, that we have allowed disrespect to the rule of law. And I think these are issues that we can confront. And the National Assembly can help us. Wasn't the Electoral Act amended recently? Have we not been having the review of the same constitution? So you, if you give Nigerians the best constitution in the world, except they have the mindset and the repentance spirit to make great things happen in this country, they will still mismanage that constitution. So for, for a GDO local, it's not really about the document we have. Even though I agree that that document needs a review to make it a full reflection of justice. But then, with what we have now, we can still prosper as a nation. I'm asking now, are there no laws, anti-terrorism laws in Nigeria? Don't we have Section 15 of Section 5 that says that the state shall abolish corrupt practices and abuse of office? Why do we have all thieves in Nigeria? Why do we have people embezzling trillions of naira? Why do we have a group of Nigerians claiming that it has spent 100 billion naira to turn around Moribon refineries? Are there no laws to go after them? These are the issues that we have. So I, I respect the yearnings of uh, our, our, our but, uh, but, 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 Yes, yes. But Mr. Logo, interesting. You, you, you've, said, you've said you respect the, the yearnings of, of especially the revered lawyer. Um, but, but it seems you're also saying that certain aspects of national life can never be carried on successfully and i i am told i do hope that we can get a uh, uh Fesus Goche on the phone line as quickly as possible so he can uh, be a part of this conversation but it, it seems you're saying that certain aspects of national life may not function if we do not fix or have a new constitution now what some people are saying is that these things you're talking about um is it fighting terrorism is it fighting corruption is it good governance is it you know fighting insecurity um, you, you know, providing health care for the people and then the benefits or, or the dividends of democracy to the grassroots, that all these things are tied to the Constitution because they say that the Constitution is what uh, sets up the structure and the framework for, for the country and the structure as it is, like you've rightly said, is flawed. So if you don't fix that structure, whatever you put on that structure, no matter how well intended, um, will, will, will collapse. So this is a, a, an example for you. Uh, for instance, you have a, a Lee Kuan Yew who comes into Nigeria and it decides to leave this country. Um, he comes back from the dead. The school of thought is that he, the, the school of thought is that he will fail with this current constitution. Let me, let me engage a prominent agitation now, which is the call for state police because of the widespread level of insecurity in the country. By asking a simple question, if we have a president that wants to achieve a huge result that we position him on the golden side of history by diminishing insecurity in Nigeria. Are you saying he cannot engage the Inspector General of Police and the military by the powers conferred in him under the constitution to diminish insecurity in the land? Or are we saying there are no provisions in the present laws of the country to fight the evil in the land? So it's all about the driver. It's all about the leader. You see, leadership and the concern we are talking about is like a tea bag. You, you drop a tea bag in a hot water, <clears throat> then you brew tea that you drink and you throw the chaff of the tea away. You don't swallow the chaff. So there is no perfect document globally. There is no constitution that is perfect. But those who drive the constitution, those who implement the constitution, go as far as ensuring that the fortunes of the people are enhanced, that they deliver to the people. And that is what we are saying. And I believe, I have studied our constitution. I know there are areas we should review based on the concept of dynamism in, in, in governance. But then, if we implement what we have now, up to 75%, Nigeria should be the third richest country in the world. And that mm. remains my position. Mm. I align myself if it is a possibility that we have a new constitution. But who are those who we allow it? Are those those who are so greedy, they have cornered Nigeria, and they want to continue to manage Nigeria? Who are the ones that we make way for it? That's the point. All right. We have the, the 
Under the 1963 Constitution, we embrace the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Can people protest freely in this country now? You see, so is it a function of confusion? No, there is a provision in the Constitution that gives you the liberty to express yourself, freedom of expression. So I am saying, and that remains my argument, that the drivers of our Constitution are not sincere and loyal to the people. And it doesn't matter the kind of constitution you give them, except we change the key players, we are going nowhere. For All right. example, All right. we have spent so much in millions of dollars buying Chicano jets. Have we been able to diminish terrorism against Nigeria? And that is why the United States of America is even reluctant to sell to us more fighting equipment because they have not seen the seriousness on our part. All right, uh, General Loco, could, could you please hold the thought? Interesting and very explosive thoughts from you. Um, it, it, you know, uh, I would like to bring at this point Chief Fessus Oguche, who is also a lawyer as well, uh, with the bars for the Nigerian Constitution. Uh, uh, Chief Oguche, can you hear me? Thank you very much for your time. Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. All right, your, your, your colleague, uh, fellow member of the bar, um, Gideon Logan is on the line. He has been trying to make a case um, uh, that, you know, Nigeria doesn't necessarily need a new constitution that will not be the solution to the nation's issues. Where where do you stand on this? And the basis for this, of course, is a call by uh, Afe Babalola, SAN, for uh, the members of the bar lawyers in Nigeria to jump on the train of demanding for a new constitution for the country. Yes, I think the issue is um, quite very topical, particularly at this moment that we are at the crossroads of our national reality. Uh, it's now beginning to dawn on us there are several, so many issues, underlying issues concerning our constitution that are not quite proper. Um, the Afa Bel Afa Babalala call was uh, condemned seriously, and I wanted to find out what actually happened, maybe how he put his tone. And I understand that he he was saying that the president should constitute or compose um, an interim government, and I think that is totally wrong. But if it is for the call for a new constitution, I think that call is quite imperative, and that's the only way to go about it. The present document we call a constitution is not per se a constitutional document. If you're looking at it from the point of view of its legitimacy, say from the point of view of its acceptance from the point of view of even, even its workability you know if you look at it from its entirety the constitution making process is quite a very a, a, a very um how do i put it sacrosanct um, uh, procedure. It is not something you just come and impose. The military of Abu Bakr Abdul Salam, and he came in in 1999 and said, well, this is the constitution and we are, it is done by the people and the people did not participate. The participatory process makes it very important that a constitutional document for it to have effect, effect and force of law must have the imprimatur or the, the mandate of the people. That's the whole essence of constitutionalism. That's the whole essence of constitutional democracy. So when you have a constitution that has a lot of gaps and inadequacies here and there, in almost all its provisions, you begin to ask questions. You know, if you now, if you now begin to point out these areas, it will take a whole lot of uh, the entire day. But then if you look at the constitution critically, you understand that part of the problem we are having now, part of the reason why the country is just there on the floor, down on its knees, is because we have a constitution that is neither here nor there. Would you call it a constitution? Forget that it has been applied by the courts. Forget that maybe, they, well, they say we have a constitution. Do you really call that document a constitution? So, 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 Chief Oguche, you, you are aligning with um, uh, Chief Afe Babalola S.A.N., who said, quote, there is poverty in the land, hunger, insecurity, narrow depreciation, unpaid emoluments, public universities have not opened for months, inflation has risen, the public and internal debt are rising while local production is appreciating, the poor are crying while the rich are gnashing their teeth. You are aligning with the senior advocate of Nigeria, it seems. Uh, yeah, I may not align, align with him for his call for an interim national... Yeah, but, but, um, but for his re reasons he's advancing in this latest call on lawyers to, to, to you know, put pressure on government to, to bring about a new constitution, he's saying these are the reasons why we need a new constitution. These Yes, and that's of the reason. 
I, I quite understand it from his perspective that one of the reasons why it has been difficult for us to 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 make away with this constitutional document is that each time there's a democratic system in place, democratic system in quotes in parentheses, the pe pe people will always tell you that you can always you can always go for amendments of the constitution without necessarily, you know, uh, 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 creating a new constitution. After all, you have your members at the National Assembly who are representing you. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Please, there are some, some, somebody's talking there. There you have some members at the National Assembly, you have members of the National Assembly who are representing you. So why go through the hog of a, a constitution making? And that's always the reason they advance. So we want a situation that the National Assembly can be kept in abeyance so that the new constitutional making formula can be brought on. It's quite okay. I give total support for that. Anything that will entrench a, 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 an egalitarian and perfect system of democracy, a perfect system of constitutionalism, I'm all for it. Because we cannot move forward. I can bet you, Kofi, we cannot move anywhere with that instrument, with that document that we are banding about. So, so, that so, yeah, Chief, 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 yeah. Proper thing. It's not just by overhauling yes, it yes. or amending it. Amendments cannot take care of certain. So, you, you're, you're saying, saying we can't, we cannot move forward. Inadequacies regarding the, 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 the validity of the constitution. Yeah, I talked about the issue of legitimacy. I also talked about the issue of acceptance. I also talked about the constitution that is a, a little skewed in one direction. Chief, Chief Abuja, can, can you hear me, please? Even as a poor, yeah. Can you hear me, sir? Middle class. We also oh. look at the constitution that that sort of violates the 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 the, sac, the sacrosanct uh, our sacrosanct allusion. Yeah, to, I, I was just to, about to ask you, Chief. Uh, uh, Chief, are you there, please? Just state. Yeah, Chief, you know, are you there? And all that. So many issues involving it. Fundamental oh, rights. Oh, gosh, you cannot hear Directed that. principles and uh, uh, fundamental objectives of state policy. All these are not perfectly put. What is the status of local governments? What is the relationship between the federating units and the center? Chief Ogucheka, if you can hear me, sir. Um, so you are saying the nation can't move forward, um, not just in terms of the structure, uh, in terms of governance, but also in terms of the impact of governance on the people. You're talking about economic issues. You're talking about social issues. You're talking about insecurity. Um, you, you know, these are all tied to the Constitution. Uh, our guest, your counterpart, who is joining us via Zoom, Jide Ologun, uh, says that it is not about this Constitution as it is about the drivers of the Constitution, that with this current Constitution, Nigeria can still make tremendous progress in governance you know, and its impact on the people. Are you asking me? Yes. Yeah, so what are your thoughts to that? That it's not about the constitution, but about the drivers of the constitution. It's all it's about the constitution. It's not just the drive. You know, you cannot have a perfect society. Uh, the, the constitutional document is a guiding authority that should uh, generate the necessary input and output for for the move towards a, a perfection, towards a near perfect state that can be achieved. It's not those that are driving it. If you if you chase out all those people who are there now in authority and bring in a new breed of people, you are going to see the same end. You look at the United States of America, look at the Constitution. It's just a tiny document, but embedded within it are certain principles and norms that are uh, ineluctable. They look at it as something that they attach to themselves. And everything depends on the level of participation, the level of involve, involvement of the people in the constitutional making process, so that their loyalty cannot be questioned. As far as I'm concerned, we have a lot of a lot of gaps in the current constitution that calls to question the validity of the constitution itself. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Jiri Ologo, let, let us come back to you. You've had uh, Chief Oguche, you know, uh, you know, make his case for uh, the constitution being the main problem and not the drivers. I just take your 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 response to that before we we round we round off. I, I quite respect the brilliant submissions of my colleague, and I want to ask a simple question. Under the same constitution, a president paid off our indebtedness. So what was wrong with the constitution at that point in time? Under the same constitution, the total indebtedness of Nigeria in 2015, March, was about 12.12 trillion naira. Today, it's in the threshold of 39 trillion naira. And you know the inflation rate, 
you know the unemployment rate, you know the evil upon the land. And that is why I am of the argument. And I, I, I'm very happy he also admitted that no nation can present a perfect uh, constitution. It's because we have not moved in the direction of sustainable development. Look at Rwanda, for example. Rwanda is a brilliant example of democracy. They were also in trouble. And look at where they are right now. You know, one of the fastest growing economies. And Tanzania is making progress. Ghana is making progress. So I quite agree, if it's possible, that you have a new constitution. But my concern is that with the crop of leadership that we have been having in Nigeria, give them the best of constitution. If they want to be corrupt and perverted, they will pervert it. And that is my own serious concern in all this. And I believe that that is a jamming argument. So having a new constitution, I'm for it. But will we implement the new constitution? I just asked a simple question. Is it not written in the Nigerian constitution right now that the primary purpose of government is the security and welfare of the people in section 14, subsection 2 of the same constitution? Go and read sections 15 and section 16. You will feel like fighting the government on why Nigeria should be a poor nation. You see, so, and these are, these are our own concerns. I quite agree that um, there are problems in the land, but I do not agree that this constitution is to be blamed for it. I think those who are driving the constitution should be blamed for it. And let me just anchor my argument on this uh, position. If you look at section four of the Nigerian constitution, I think that's amended. It says that the National Assembly shall make laws for the peace, order, and good governance of Nigeria. I have asked a simple question. If the country has come to this terrible situation as described by Chief Afe Babalola, a land of hunger, insecurity, narrow depreciation, unpaid emoluments, public universities have not opened for months, can we claim that the government has failed? Is there a provision for... Uh, impeachment of the president under the constitution? The answer is yes. We have more than nine senators, more than 60 out of rest members representing okay. the people. So right. for a GDO logo, new constitution is welcome for me, but the, 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 you know, the kernel of my argument is that with the constitution we have now, even with all the shortcomings, Nigeria can still be a better place than it is. All and right. that brings us to leadership. I think that should have about six letters. The L stands for link. We need someone who can link up with the people and link people up with one another. The E stands for empowerment. We need you know, a leader that can empower the people, make our infrastructure work, energize the economy, empower the, 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 the industrial sector. How, why should this be selling for how much it's selling now? Why should our refineries not work? Is it okay. the fault of the constitution? No. We, 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 ha we have to quickly uh, round off. Uh, we can go on and on on leadership. Yes, yes, and yes, indeed. Position. All right, interesting. Uh, uh, final word, very, very brief from you, um, Chief Oguche. You've heard a colleague, he says that, you know, constitution has already provisions. For instance, he says the uh, primary responsibility of government is to, you know, secure the welfare and the security or to provide for the welfare and the security of the people. These things are on paper, so nothing stops them from doing these things. So a final word from you, uh, Chief Oguche, in response to that before we go. Very, very yes, short, uh, Yes, that we have structural problems. And the fact that our country is the way it is, uh, is on the shoulders of the Constitution because our Constitution uh, failed to recognize the diversity of the country, the uniqueness of the people, and uh, maybe the interest of the people it's not just writing in the constitution that the welfare and security of the people is an, is is the primary purpose of government if there's no constitutional limitations and directions that that tend to make people in power to move towards the right direction what do you expect we are looking at a constitution that will have much more value to the people that will create electoral an electoral system that will stand the test of time and also monitor and implement government directives and right. policies with equal measure in terms of participation of the people.
and not just the decision of the leadership. Okay, okay. I want to thank you very much, gentlemen, uh, for your time indeed. Um, uh, the, the, the senior advocate of Nigeria said that even the law profession, for it to be sustainable and in the interest of the majority of Nigerians and the country's sustenance as a whole, he's urging you lawyers to support the crusade for a new constitution. He calls it crusade uh, to save this country from total collapse. Jiria Alogun and Fessor Zuguche, chief, thank you very much for your time. You're still watching Plus Politics, and thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break, and when we return, Nigeria's Senate has prohibited the payment of ransom to terrorists and kidnappers. We'll look at this when we come back. Please stay with us.